Hey guys, how's it going? Olien here with another synthesis tutorial. And this time we're going to look at a wavetable or a square sawtooth wavetable in Silent 1. So Silent obviously isn't a wavetable synth like Massive, for example, but you can set up a square wave sawtooth wave uh, wavetable to create some cool sounds and um, Besides showing you how to set it up, I'm also going to show you how to use it and what it is useful for because I spent some time looking into this and I find it a pretty useful uh, tool to have to create sounds and to fine tune them. So yeah, that's going to be fun. And um, yeah, like pretty much always, I'm going to use a, an oscilloscope and a spectrogram to look at um, what we're working with. Both of these plugins are free. I'm using Melder Oscilloscope. Uh, M oscilloscope from Melder Production and Vo Vox Single Span. So I'm going to put the link to those in the description since they're free. Uh, cool things to have. Mm. So yeah, let's set this up. Um, we're going to use two sawtooth waves to kind of shape uh, a square wave. And maybe let's go over that. Let's go over how that works real quick. So when you use a sawtooth wave and invert it, which basically means flipping the wave upside down, um, you have both um, waves canceling each other out perfectly. So you don't hear anything even if, if you press a key. Okay. And then if you shift the phase, they don't perfectly cancel each other out, but form a new waveform, which in this case, when you shift the phase by 180 degrees, forms a square wave. And I don't want to go over, go over this for too long because I kind of already covered that before, but let's just take a quick look. You have a sawtooth wave and then an inverted sawtooth wave, which means, okay, instead of going into the negative amplitude then up and negative and up, it goes down and up and down and up. Okay, so I think you can kind of see how this waveform has been flipped upside down. If you put those on top of each other, since you have to add the amplitude of each wave to see what the resulting amplitude is, you have perfect cancellation because they always correspond the opposite value kind of. So you have negative one here and positive one here, and then the negative and positive values always been equal. Now, when you shift the phase, um, obviously they add up or subtract to different numbers, which in this case, you can see the amount of amplitude that the red uh, waveform goes down is exactly the amount of amplitude that the blue waveform goes up, which basically then leads to you or leads to this waveform here always staying at one if you add these together because the red and the blue line always add up to one, then they all go all the way down. And here you have the blue and the red waveform always adding up to negative one. And then you have it again here adding up to positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one, uh, positive one, negative, and so on. I kind of covered this in another video. So check my video on pulse width modulation in silent if, if you want to have a bit longer explanation on how this works, if this was a bit too fast. But basically what happens is if you put these, if you add these two waveforms together, you get a pulse wave, okay? And then by shifting the phase, you get different pulse widths. But that's not exactly the topic that we want to focus on right now. We just want to focus on the wavetable. So yeah, what I realized is that besides altering the phase, you can also alter the volume of one of the waveforms, which kind of turns it into a wavetable. If we take a look over here, and I'm playing the square wave, Okay, maybe let me put up the volume slightly. So yes, right now we built a square wave by using two sawtooth waves, inverting one of them and uh, shifting the phase by 180 degrees, okay? So when we start decreasing the volume of one of them, we are automatically gonna take out some of the cancellation that leads to the square wave being shaped or formed. And okay, I'm going to need some more amplitude over here, but I'm going to turn the volume down over here because it's just not that nice sound to listen to. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now we see a bigger picture. If I start decreasing the volume 
of one of the saw waves, then we realize that it slowly turns into the saw wave that we start with. So adding some of the other inverted saw wave in leads to slowly shaping it to become a square wave, which means we can basically switch back and forth between these two. Okay. So now in the, w like one of the problems in silence is you cannot just um, modulate a single oscillator's volume. It kind of always works in part A and B. So you can modulate volume A and volume B. So if you want to modulate, for example, with an LFO, um, you want to move through the wavetable in time, you would have to, instead of using oscillator A2, you can just use oscillator B2, for example, use uh, what? Well, so a wave here, invert it, and then, um, yeah, you basically have the option down here to alter volume A or volume B. And yeah, that's cool. This way you can modulate um, or kind of use the wavetable over time. But now let's take a look at what this actually does, because I mean, I, I do have massive and um, I mean, I could just use a wavetable there. Like, why bother to use it in Silent? Well, really, you don't have to bother unless you really just want to use Silent. But even though I was using Mathis Massive, I didn't really understand what the wavetable does, like what it does about the frequencies. And I took a closer look in Span. And that's the first time that I learned what the real difference between a pulse wave and a sawtooth wave is. Okay, and I think that's very useful to know. So basically, uh, a sawtooth wave consists of um, the fundamental note or frequency that you're playing, and then harmonics. Okay, wait a second. Do I have this here turned up? Okay. Okay, looks good. So you can hold this here. So if we play, for example, an E, at 164 um, hertz, then we will get a certain uh, set or fixed set of harmonics, which in this case are even and odd harmonics. And it, to kind of explain what that is, um, I'm gonna use a G. Okay, I have to go a bit deeper for that. Yes, I'm gonna use this G over here because it's at 100 hertz, which is pretty easy to calculate with. So a sawtooth wave um, consists of all even harmonics and all odd harmonics, which means besides the basic uh, frequency or the, the fundamental frequency that you have at 100 hertz, you also get all multiples of 100 hertz. So the next frequency within a sawtooth wave is 200 hertz the double of 100 and then the next frequency is going to be 300 hertz which is adding another 100 to the 200 adding another 100 to 400 500 600 700 800 and so on so you have all multiples of 100 hertz which is the fundamental in this case so if we play a different note for example let's play an even lower g which we cannot hear that much right now which is going to be 50, we're going to have all multiples of 50, which means we're going to jump from 50 to 100, to 150, more or less, to 200 and so on. Same goes for if you played an octave higher. In this case, we start with 200 and we get all multiples of 200, which means we get 200 hertz, we get 400 hertz, we get 600 hertz, we get 800 hertz. And obviously, these guys aren't just frequencies, they are also notes. So doubling, uh, since you get a multiple of the fundamental in a sawtooth wave, besides the fundamental, which is a G, you always get a G an octave higher because you're doubling the value, which then leads to an octave higher, okay? Then adding another 200 is not doubling the octave anymore. So it gives you a seventh, which then is a D in this case, okay? And over time, 
since always doubling the frequency would go an octave higher, but just adding the value of the fundamental on top will give you always kind of a different um, a different um, note. Uh, leads to the fact that you have a different set of sounds or notes in here. Which So it's basically like a big ass chord of um, sine waves, okay? But yeah, this was kind of a longer explanation of what a sawtooth wave is, but yes, like I said, it's always all multiples of the fundamental frequency you're playing. While a square wave or a pulse wave is um, consists of only odd harmonics, which means when we play 100 hertz, that you skip the next uh, multiple of um, the fundamental. So in this case, you skip 200, and then you get the odd uh, harmonic right here. So if you have a bass frequency of 100, then you get you skip 200, but you get 300. You skip 400, which would be adding another 100, and you get 500. Then you skip another 100, and you add another 100. So you always go in two steps of 200 in this case. If you play this in octave higher, you have a fundamental of 200 hertz, then you skip 400 hertz and get to 600 hertz. You skip 800 hertz and you get to 1000, 1000 hertz, exactly. So yeah, that's kind of the difference between um, a sawtooth wave and a uh, square wave, which, and this is why a uh, square wave kind of sounds a bit hollow because um, you're obviously having less frequency content within the wave, okay? So you're missing all these different notes in between these odd harmonics, okay? Um, and same for the high end, I, f I feel like the, since there are more frequencies in this uh, sawtooth wave, um, it sounds a bit sharper. So yeah, so that's kind of the difference. So let's get back to the wave table between a sawtooth and a square wave. So we set this one up again, do the sawtooth, invert it. Okay, perfect. And then we have the volume control. So looking at this uh, wave table in span, we realize that, okay, right now we're playing, we're playing 200, 400. So right now we have zero voices here. That's why it was this, a sawtooth wave. But now we have a square wave. And this isn't exactly 180 degrees, so we're kind of getting something slightly different. But this is more or less now a sawtooth wave. And if we hit shift, we can get this, try to get this even more accurate. Yes, now we get 180 degrees by double clicking. Um, okay, I didn't know that worked, but that's neat. Okay. So, yes, we kind of almost get a pretty good um, square wave. And now what the wavetable does is, let's say, okay, I have the, I, I want the sound of a full sounding sawtooth wave, but I kind of also want something in between like a sawtooth wave and a, and a square wave. So I do want these fun, uh, I do want the, uh, even harmonics to come out, but not as much as they would in a, in a sawtooth wave. Okay, I'm explaining myself terribly. Let's do this one again. So here we go with a sawtooth wave. I'm gonna take 100 hertz for that. Okay, we have all these harmonics, okay? If we go and turn this into a square wave, all these harmonics disappear. So now let's say we don't want a complete uh, square wave and neither want a complete or perfect sawtooth wave we want something in between so we do want the even harmonics but not that loud then by adjusting this volume and moving in between a sawtooth and a square wave we can add these harmonics in or take them out by adjusting this volume fader okay so taking out the volume of the second sawtooth wave allows the or doesn't cancel out the even harmonics while bringing this sawtooth wave in takes out the even harmonics. Okay, so this allows you to really fine tune the sound that you want to create. And if you have a, like if you're, for example, building a bass preset and you say, okay, 
it sounds a bit too too um, too full. I want a slightly more hollow sound, but I don't want it to sound completely hollow. Then you can adjust this, okay? So even if you're not a silent guy and you're using Massive or you you rather use the wavetable and Massive, you can now understand what the difference between a sawtooth and a square wave is and um, also kind of understand what harmonics are and what the difference between even an odd harmonics is and also how you can add the harmonics in or just kind of move in between a sawtooth wave and a square wave and um, and what that actually means which in this case means how present are the even harmonics okay i find that a pretty useful technique and also like the philosophy behind it is pretty cool because understanding all of this stuff also helps when you're working with like distortion and these kind of things because you start realizing what different kinds of harmonics are added when you add different types of distortion and this kind of stuff so for me, uh, finding this out was pretty helpful because um, it gave me a pretty good understanding about, um, yeah, how, th how waves work, how synthesis work, what harmonics are, and um, how you can kind of fine tune your sounds depending on what you need. Um, yeah, a bit longer than expected, but hopefully helpful. Um, yeah, subscribe and give me a like if you find it helpful. If not, please just comment something and what I could do better and um, yeah hope to see you around and in some other videos coming up take care guys